Now I want to look at our circuit in a slightly different way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a graph that you may see occasionally. It's something that's not usually on the data sheets for bipolar junction transistors, more commonly in FETs, but I'm going to show what this graph means and how it's built up. So let's go ahead and go back to our circuit. There is our base circuit. Here is our collector circuit, collector resistor, current meter, variable resistor, and over here to our battery. Let's put the battery and resistor over here too, just to remind us that we can control this base current. Don't need to know what they are, we just need to know the base current. And positive, negative, that's going to be a variable battery. And there is our collector. Make this one K again and make our HFE10. And we are set up except for our little green man, can't forget him. It's getting smaller and smaller, isn't he? Let's connect our circuits to remind us it is a common emitter circuit. And down here I'm going to start drawing a graph, but I'll complete it later. Okay, here is our VCE, voltage from the collector to the emitter. Here is our collector current. And we'll make this up to 10 volts. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. We'll make this 0, 1, and 2 milliamps. So this will be volts. And what I want to do is start building a different graph this time. This time I'm going to have certain base voltages. Instead of changing the base voltage and see what happens, I'm going to have a steady base voltage and I'm going to change our VCC to see what happens as I change that I'm going to change my VCE remember this is our VCE across there so as I change that as I make that higher what's going to happen well let's find out what happens let's make the graph so here we go we're going to start at 100 microamps as our base current and he sees the HFE of 10, so he adjusts his resistor until he sees what? One milliamp, except there's one problem. This is zero to 10 volts, and I'm going to start with that at zero volts. So he sees that at 100 milliamps, he needs to adjust his resistance until he sees 10 milliamps. So he's going to crank his resistance down, 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 and what's gonna happen? Nothing. He's gonna get this all the way down to zero ohms, and he's going to get no current. So we're right, let's see, we have no voltage, no current, we're sitting right there. He says, sorry boss, uh, I can't give you what I don't have, you've gotta give me some voltage or else I can't give you any current. So now what I'm going to do is start increasing this voltage, and as that voltage increases, we start to get an increase in current. How much, well, don't need to worry about that now because he's not worried about it. He's just looking at this 100 microamps, I need to see one microamp. I'm cranking that down. I don't see it yet. So sorry, boss, I still can't give you what I don't have. So that's going to go up and up and up until it reaches a certain point. And then he's going to see, aha, I've reached one milliamp. He's still zero ohms, but he sees one milliamp. He's happy. Now what's going to happen if I keep increasing this voltage? this current is going to go above one milliamp. So what's he going to do? He's going to increase his resistance to bring it back down to one milliamp. As that current tries to go up, he cranks up his resistance and this is going to flatten out. So now I increase this voltage, that's going to increase my current, right? So what's he going to do? He's going to increase his resistance to keep it the same. So as I increase this voltage, here I am increasing the voltage, increasing the voltage, increasing the voltage, He's increasing his resistance, increasing his resistance, increasing his resistance so that my collector current does not change. So this is what has not changed. That's a base current 
I sub B equals 100 microamps. Regardless of what I do with my VCC, I'm going to get a collector current of one milliamp. Now what I'm going to do is crank this all the way back down to zero, and we're going to increase this to 200 microamps. So he's going to see his current go down. He's going to crank his resistance back down, back to zero. Now we're back where we started here, to zero and zero. Now I'm going to start increasing my voltage here. I'm going to increase that voltage, increase the voltage, increase the voltage, and we're going to get more and more current, and eventually I'm going to hit two milliamps. And what's he going to do? As soon as that tries to go above two milliamps, he's going to crank up his resistance. And as that current tries to go up, he cranks up his resistance. So I increase my voltage. He's going to increase his resistance. And so now we're sitting here with a, remember we're monitoring this voltage right here. That's the voltage here. As I crank up that voltage, this voltage goes up and up and up. And he keeps cranking up his resistance to keep the current the same. My VCC is going all over the place. I can crank this up and down and up and down, and he cranks his up and down and up and down to match to keep that current just the same. And if we go up to 300 microamps, same exact thing is going to happen. He's going to go up. As soon as he sees 300 microamps, if it goes above, he's going to crank up his resistance. And as I change that voltage, he is going to change his resistance to match so no matter what I do here, he just compensates by taking his resistance up and down, keeping that as a steady current. So this will be a base current of 100 microamps. I get a collector current of 1 milliamp, regardless of what I do here. If I change my base current to 200 microamps, my collector current goes up to 2 milliamps, but stays steady. I don't care what I do with my voltage here, that current stays the same and same thing, up to 300 microamps, I get three milliamps. So this is the beginning of this curve you may see from time to time. Now let's get this out of the way and look at the curve. Redraw it a little more realistically. There's my current, there's my voltage, V, C, E, I, C, collector current, voltage from the collector to the emitter, And then our current is going to be in milliamps. Remember, this is in volts. We'll put okay, so what's going to happen? Remember, as I increase my VCC, my supply voltage, that's going to increase the voltage from the collector to the emitter. So this voltage is going to go up. My current is going to try to increase, but the little green man is going to increase his resistance to match. So we're going to get something that looks like this. Let's try to make this a little realistic. I want to put a little mark right about here and make that my target. This will not be perfect. Yeah. So this is an extension of what I did before. So here's a base current of 100 microamps, 200, 300, 400, 500, all the way up to 900. And I tried to draw these a little bit with a little bit of a slope because in reality, they will not be perfect. Remember, as we increase our base current, our HFE increases, that's going to cause these to not be perfectly flat. And as we go up higher, they get a little more slope to them. And also, it depends on the transistor. Some transistors will slope more than others. It depends on how big we make the graph. So if we have more voltage and more current, we have to shrink the graph down, and we're going to see even more. So you might see a graph that looks something like this. They can get pretty steep slopes depending on our parameters we're using, but I'm trying to keep them pretty flat. They, under low voltages and currents, they tend to be pretty flat. So here are each of our different collector currents based on our different base currents. So with this particular transistor, 100 microamps gives us one milliamp, 
200 microamps gives us 2 milliamps, etc. Depends on the transistor. So let's go back real quickly to the circuit. I'm just going to draw the transistor here with the collector resistor. And remember we went through where we kept changing our base current to see what our collector currents did. And we saw that if we had a base current of 100 microamps, we had a collector current of 1 milliamp, okay. And what was our collector voltage? We lost 1 volt there and had 9 volts left over. So there's our 9 volts left over. And there's our 1 milliamp that puts us right there. Now, if we went to 500 microamps, we ended up with 5 milliamps, losing 5 volts across there. So we have 5 volts across there, leaving us with 5 volts left over. So we go to a VCE of 5 volts and 5 milliamps. Put that right there. Now we go all the way to 1,000 microamps here. That's going to give us 10 milliamps up here, which means we're going to lose 10 volts and have zero volts left over, so we go to a VCE of zero volts and up to a collector current of 10 milliamps. That's going to put us right about there. And now what we can do is, if I can do this, draw a straight line across there. Remember that one? That was the line that was created as we watched the VCE compared to the collector current. So as our collector current goes up, our VCE goes down and we get this curve. And remember that this slope is directly proportional to that resistor. So if I decreased the size of the resistor, that slope got steeper. If I increased the size of the resistor, that slope got less. So notice when I decreased the resistance to 500 ohms, so there's at 1K, this would be at 2K. So if I decrease it to 500 ohms, Notice that the slope goes up such that this can go all the way up, keep going, going up to 20 milliamps before I reach the zero point there. So this, putting that slope on there is used in analyzing small signal amplifiers that we will see some other day. And it's called the load line. And we're not going to go any deeper into that today, but just remember that's called the load line proportional to this resistance, and as we draw our VCE compared to our collector current, we see that we get that straight line. But remember, we can't get all the way up here. So it actually ends right about there. Because what's happening? Our collector current is increasing, our VCE is going down, we eventually get to a point where increasing our base current no longer changes anything. So this is our saturation point. Right there is where we get our saturation. So this area here is called the saturation region. It's no man's land, we can't get there. And notice as we change the circuit such as we have a higher resistance, our saturation ends up here. So with a 2K resistor, we would saturate with a collector current of five milliamps, well, a little less than five milliamps and our voltage would be just a little bit lower. Remember that voltage? V, C, E, SAT. Lowest possible voltage. Well, with this particular resistor, that happens right about there, which was at, what was that? 9.6 milliamps and at 0 0.4 volts. Notice if we increase the resistance, that becomes a lower collector current, just making up these numbers, just kind of looking at the graph, 4.8 milliamps and somewhere around maybe 0.3 volts. So as we increase that resistance, our saturation voltage, VCE sat, goes down slightly along with our maximum current. But if we decrease this resistance, notice that everything goes up, we get more current and our VCE sat will also get just a little bit higher. So that's one thing we can analyze in this particular graph here. Another thing we can see is there's going to be, with no base current, we're going to get some minimum, I'm drawing this way too high because remember this is going to be nanoamps to microamps, but I'll just draw it there. That's going to be at IB 
equals, well, whatever minimum it is, I'll put it a question mark there. But what's that current? That current is called IC, our collector current with the base open. Our minimum current is down there. And so we can't go below that current. So if we try to decrease our base current, we're not going to go down. So now decreasing our input no longer changes. And so we are now in cutoff. So this area is called the cutoff region below that minimum current. And this region over here is called the saturation region. So this also tells us what we can do to solve the saturation problem. So if we're saturating, is that a good or a bad thing or indifferent? Well, it really depends. So what can we do if we're saturating? What that means is in, we've reached the point where increasing our input no longer changes the output. So if we want to get out of that region, we have to decrease the input. So one way to do that is, let's say we have a microphone. We're talking into a microphone, move it further away. That will decrease the input and that will take us out of saturation. So solving the saturation problem might be just simply an input problem. And if you work with audio systems, that'll be a frequent thing that you have to deal with to stop the distortion because going into saturation distorts the wave. We'll talk about that when we get into amplifiers. Want to get out of saturation? Decrease the mic level. So someone's talking, you're starting to get distortion. Cut down the mic input or say, hey, move the mic away from your mouth. Cut down the mic amplifier, whatever. That will take you out of saturation and keep you in this region where you want to be operating somewhere along this area here. But the other thing you can do, if we're saturating at an input of... 1,000 microamps. So 1,000 microamps is taking us up into here where we're hitting the saturation point here. What could we do to fix that? Well, we could increase this to 20 volts. So it was a 10 volt, now it's 20 volts. So what does that do? Now the entire graph doubles in size. This can go all the way up to 20 milliamps. This can go all the way up to 20 volts. And so we've just simply made everything bigger and we're working in a much bigger area. So increasing the voltage will make it less likely to saturate. But that might not be an option. The other option would be what happens if we decrease this resistor? Then we can get all the way up. We're following this slope here. We still have a maximum of 10 volts. Maximum of 10 volts, but we can get all the way up, almost all the way to 20 milliamps before we go into saturation. Of course, it decreases the gain of the amplifier, so it's all a trade-off. So three ways to deal with saturation. Decrease the input. There's trade-offs to that. Increase the supply voltage, but then you have to change the whole circuit based on that supply voltage. Or decrease this collector resistor, which decreases the gain, but also takes us out of saturation where we can get to a greater current before we saturate.